In this video, I'm going to show you everything you need to know to optimize your Fluoride model for anything, really, like VTubing, VR chat, or game development. I will also include some of the test results I did to inform you on which settings are worth it. The first thing you can do to optimize your model is to just change your model slightly. One of the golden rules in optimizing any 3D model is to reduce the amount of polygon count, or as we usually call them, poly count. You can see how many polygons your model has in the export menu. The more polygons you have, the more likely your model will lag. For Fedora Studio, I noticed two things that cause your model to have too many poly counts. The hair, and everything you make with the hair. Accessories don't really add that many poly counts, and the clothes can vary wildly from 5,000 to 16,000 poly counts. Most of your poly count comes from the hair. This single strand of ahoge alone has added 600 poly count to this basic pheroid model. And unsurprisingly, longer hair adds more poly count than short hair. So if your pheroid model has a double or triple your body's poly count, you don't need to fret too much. There is no specific number of poly counts you need to follow. If you need this amount of poly count to achieve that look on your character, then you know it's just the right amount. Just make sure it's not six digits. That being said, I recommend you to cut down the hair details and just make bigger strands. Remember that you can use the hair textures to create an illusion of having detailed hair strands. But one thing I really don't like in Fiora Studio community is the overuse of hair to make different accessories. Look, I totally get it. It's easier to make things in the program you already know. But this can easily get you to over 100,000 polygons. Yes, in VTubing, you can get away with it because you only need to display one character at a time. Plus, your PC is most likely good enough if you can run Unity. So it's really not a big deal until you start to use it for VR chat or heck, game development. So please, please, please avoid using hair to make custom hats. Instead, it's far better if you just download a free hat model and just modify the textures to better match your character. It's way more efficient. These two rules double if you're using Fjord models for game development. You really have to consider how many poly counts your character has, especially if you're displaying multiple characters on the same screen. I found this blog post on 3ds.com which gives a rough estimate for poly count per model. But then again, this should vary wildly for different game genres, as seen in this forum post. Obviously, if you have many character models that are often seen from far away, like in RTS games, then you don't need that much poly count. Those numbers will be even less if you're making a game for mobile devices. Fortunately, modern game engines like Unity have many features to cheat the amount of polygons displayed on the screen, like occlusion culling, level of detail, or Unreal's amazing Nanite, which automatically adjusts the amount of poly counts in real time. So you can technically get away with higher poly count numbers. Just go ahead and check their documentation pages to learn how to use those features. Now, if you are just using your model for VTubing, then that's pretty much all you need to do. Contrary to popular belief, Fedroid Studio's export settings just don't help that much with performance. For this video, I did many testing on different Fioroid models, and in summary, you will only start to notice the difference when you have a lot of models displayed on the screen. Which is why I believe that export settings will only be useful for improving VRChat performance ranking or for game development. Let's first open Reduce Polygon Settings, which gives you control to reduce poly count to specific parts of your model. The further right the slider goes, the less poly count your model has. It is a balancing act on finding the right slider values without making your model look too horrible. This is why I recommend you to follow the guidelines first before going through this step, because you have less control on what those sliders do to affect how your model looks. Enabling delete transparent meshes also works wonders for your model, since unlike the other choices, it's a free polygon reduction without affecting how your model looks. For Blender users, this is a lifesaver, because if you have transparent textures on your clothes, just enabling this option alone will remove all of those meshes, making it easier for you to edit it in Blender. 
But if you're a long time viewer of this channel, you will know that enabling this option means that you can't use popular blend shape tools like my nap plugin or expression pack. Fortunately, you can choose to not use this setting at all. If you have a model with around 50,000 polycount, even with 50% polycount reduction, it will only affect the performance by up to 4% in this scene filled with 100 models. This improvement seems to be negligible when compared to what you will get with the next setting. Reduced material settings allow you to have the texture size. At this distance, you cannot tell the difference between these two models, so it's really not a big deal. You will only notice the difference if you zoom all the way in. You can also choose to reduce the amount of materials in your model, which reduces flexibility if you want to do fancy stuff like clothing transition using shaders. That's why I recommend you to use this for generic NPC characters and not for your playable characters. With this simple setting, you can save up to 30% performance improvement in some cases. This is because by reducing the materials in each character, you're reducing the amount of shader calculations the computer need to do, which in turn adds more frame rate. Plus, reducing texture size also leads to a 50% reduced asset size, which is nice. Now, if you combine reduced polygon with reduced material, my testing shows that you basically get the same performance as if you're just doing reduced material alone. So that's why, again, I don't recommend you using the reduced polygon setting at all. Reduced hair bones is something that I wouldn't recommend you to use in any circumstances except if your character's hair is not meant to move at all, like an NPC's hair. Putting any number on this slider will turn off hair physics entirely. And that's pretty much it. You can now export your model and use it for any purpose. If you like this video, then consider leaving a like and subscribe for future videos. If you'd like to support me making more of these tutorials, then feel free to subscribe to me on Patreon, where you will get future videos early and discounts on my future tools. If subscription is not your thing, then feel free to purchase my NAP plugin or expression pack. Both will help you in making your Fedora model looks more professional without any Unity skill. It's a one-time purchase and you will get any future updates for free forever. And with that, I think I'll see you guys later. Goodbye.